I was a queen, and you took away my crown, a wife, and you killed my husband, a mother, and you deprived me of my children. My blood alone remains. Take it, but do not make me suffer long. These were the last words of Marie Antoinette, the last queen of France before the French Revolution. How did she end up like this? How did she go from being a beloved princess to a despised traitor? This is the tragic story of Marie Antoinette, a woman who became a symbol of the excesses and injustices of the monarchy. Marie Antoinette was born on November 2, 1755, at the Hofburg Palace, the imperial residence of the Habsburgs in Vienna, Austria. She was the 15th child of Emperor Francis I and Empress Maria Theresa, one of the most powerful rulers in Europe. She grew up in a lavish palace, surrounded by music, art, and culture. She was educated in languages, religion, and etiquette, but she also enjoyed playing games, dancing, and dressing up. She was known for her beauty, charm, and vivacity. But her carefree childhood came to an end when she was only 10 years old. Her mother decided to arrange a marriage between her and Louis Auguste, the heir to the French throne. The marriage was meant to seal the alliance between Austria and France, who had been enemies for centuries. In 1769, Marie Antoinette received a miniature medallion of her future husband, a shy and awkward 15-year-old boy. She wrote to her mother, I find him very well, and I assure you that I love him with all my heart. But she had never met him in person. The next year, she left her family and homeland to travel to France. She had to renounce her Austrian identity and adopt a new French name, Marie Antoinette. She also had to leave behind her beloved dog, Mops. She met Louis Auguste for the first time on May 14, 1770, at the border town of Strasbourg. They exchanged polite greetings and then continued their journey to Versailles, where they were married on May 16th. But the wedding was not a happy occasion for Marie Antoinette. She had to endure a humiliating medical examination to check her fertility and a bedding ceremony witnessed by a few selected courtiers to consummate the marriage. She also had to face the hostility of some nobles and courtiers who resented her foreign origin and influence. How did she cope with this new and unfamiliar life? How did she adjust to her new role as the Dauphine of France? And how did she get along with her husband, who was kind but distant? In the next chapter, we will see how Marie Antoinette tried to find happiness and friendship in the French court. Marie Antoinette soon discovered that life at the French court was very different from what she was used to. She had to follow strict rules of etiquette and protocol, and endure constant scrutiny and gossip. She also had to deal with the pressure of producing an heir for the throne, which proved to be difficult and frustrating. But she also found some friends and allies, such as her husband's aunt, Madame Adelaide, who taught her about French culture and politics. Her brother-in-law, Count d'Artois, who shared her taste for fun and entertainment, and her lady-in-waiting, Madame de Lamballe, who became her confidant and companion. She also tried to please her husband, who was kind but distant. They had a cordial but not passionate relationship. They slept in separate bedrooms and rarely spent time together. They also failed to produce an heir for eight years, which caused rumors and criticism. Some blamed Marie Antoinette for being too frivolous or unfaithful. Others blamed Louis Auguste for being too weak or infertile. Marie Antoinette found solace in spending money on clothes, jewels, gambling, and parties. She also enjoyed visiting her private retreats, the Petit Trianon and the Hameau de la Reine, where she could escape from the pressures of court life and indulge in her hobbies of gardening, reading, and music. She also adopted several pets, including dogs, sheep, goats, and a donkey. But her extravagant lifestyle earned her the nickname of Madame Deficit among the people, who were suffering from poverty, famine, and taxation. They also resented her interference in political affairs, especially when she supported her mother's interests against those of France. They accused her of being pro-Austrian, anti-French, and anti-revolutionary. They also spread malicious rumors and pamphlets about her, such as the affair of the diamond necklace, a scandal involving a fraudulent purchase of a costly jewel in her name. They also attributed to her the infamous phrase, let them eat cake, 
when told that the people had no bread, though there is no evidence that she ever said it. Why did the people hate her so much? Why did they blame her for everything that went wrong in the country? And why did they not see the good things that she did, such as patronizing artists and charities, supporting reforms and humanitarian causes, and showing compassion and generosity to the poor and the sick? In the next chapter, we will see how Marie Antoinette faced more challenges. In 1774, King Louis XV died of smallpox, and Louis Auguste became King Louis XVI. Marie Antoinette became Queen of France at the age of 19. She hoped that her new status would give her more power and respect, but she soon realized that she was still under the control of her husband and his ministers. She also faced new challenges and responsibilities as a queen. She had to perform ceremonial duties, receive foreign dignitaries, patronize artists and charities, and most importantly, produce an heir to secure the succession. She finally gave birth to a daughter, Marie Therese, in 1778, after consulting with doctors and changing her diet. She was overjoyed, but the king and the nation were disappointed that it was not a son. She had to endure four more pregnancies, which took a toll on her health and beauty. She gave birth to two sons, Louis Joseph and Louis Charles, and another daughter, Sophie, but only one of them survived childhood. She also faced more opposition and hostility from the public, who blamed her for the country's financial and political crises. They accused her of being wasteful, corrupt, immoral, and treasonous. They also saw her as a foreign enemy who wanted to destroy France and restore Austria's power. They called her l'Autrichienne, which means the Austrian woman, but also sounds like the ostrich woman. She tried to defend herself and her reputation, but she also made some mistakes and enemies. She alienated some of her allies, such as Madame de Lamballe, whom she dismissed from her service. She offended some of the nobles, such as the Duke of Orléans, whom she snubbed at a ball, and she antagonized some of the reformers, such as Jacques Necker, whom she opposed as finance minister. She also became more involved in political affairs, especially after the outbreak of the French Revolution in 1789. She supported her husband's attempts to resist the demands of the revolutionaries, who wanted to limit his power and establish a constitutional monarchy. She also sought help from her brother, Emperor Leopold II of Austria, who declared war on France in 1792. But her actions only made things worse for herself and her family. How did she cope with this nightmare? How did she protect her children from the horrors of the revolution? And how did she face the inevitable fate that awaited her? In the final chapter, we will see how Marie Antoinette met her end with dignity and courage. The revolutionaries saw Marie Antoinette as their main enemy and target. They attacked her palace, the Tuileries, on August 10, 1792, and forced the royal family to take refuge in the Legislative Assembly. They then imprisoned them in the Temple Tower, a medieval fortress in Paris. They also killed many of her friends and supporters, such as Madame de Lamballe, whose severed head was paraded under her window. They also put her husband on trial for treason and executed him by guillotine on January 21, 1793. They then declared France a republic and abolished the monarchy. Marie Antoinette was left alone with her two surviving children, Marie Therese, who was 14 years old, and Louis Charles, who was 7 years old. The revolutionaries separated her from her son and tried to turn him against her. They also accused her of abusing him sexually, though there was no proof of it. They finally put her on trial on October 14, 1793. They charged her with crimes against the state, the people, and the revolution. They presented false witnesses and forged evidence against her. They also denied her legal counsel and due process. She defended herself with dignity and courage, but she knew that she had no chance of acquittal. She was convicted on October 16th and sentenced to death by guillotine. She wrote a last letter to her sister-in-law, Madame Elizabeth, expressing her love for her children and her forgiveness for her enemies. But the letter was not delivered, but intercepted by the revolutionaries. She was then taken to the Place de la Révolution, now Place de la Concorde, where a large crowd awaited her execution. She mounted the scaffold with calmness and composure. She accidentally stepped on the executioner's foot and said, Pardon me, sir, I did not do it on purpose. Then she knelt down and whispered, 
God have mercy on me. The blade fell and severed her head at 12.15 p.m. She was 37 years old. Her body was thrown into an unmarked grave in the Madeline Cemetery, along with other victims of the guillotine. Her son died in prison in 1795. Only her daughter survived the revolution and was released in 1796. In 1815, after the restoration of the monarchy, her remains were exhumed and reburied in the Basilica of Saint-Denis, the traditional burial place of French kings and queens. Marie Antoinette remains one of the most controversial and fascinating figures in history. She has been portrayed as a villain or a victim, a martyr or a monster, depending on different perspectives and interpretations. She has inspired countless books, movies, plays, and songs that depict various aspects of her life and personality. But who was she really? Was she a spoiled and selfish queen who cared nothing for the suffering of the people? Or was she a misunderstood and maligned woman who tried to do her best in a difficult situation? Was she a traitor who betrayed her country and conspired with its enemies? Or was she a patriot who loved her country and defended its interests? Was she a sinner who committed many crimes and sins? Or was she a saint who forgave those who wronged her and died for her faith? The answer may not be simple or clear-cut, but one thing is certain. Marie Antoinette was a human being who lived, loved, suffered, and died. And as such, she deserves our respect and compassion. I hope you enjoyed this video about the rise and fall of Marie Antoinette. If you did, please like, share, and subscribe to Luxury Freaks for more videos like this. And don't forget to comment below and let me know what you think of Marie Antoinette. Was she a hero or a villain? A victim or a culprit? A queen or a commoner? I would love to hear your opinions and suggestions for the next video. Thank you for watching and see you next time on Luxury Freaks.